Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, I tell you, it endures until the end. Well, happy Resurrection Weekend. I was reflecting with someone that I was speaking to over the phone. I was reflecting how when COVID hit, and for the first time in my life, we weren't able to go inside the sanctuary. Oh, I don't know about you, but that was traumatizing to me. Hallelujah. Just didn't feel right. It was like, what is this? I don't even know how to act not being able to go to church on Resurrection Sunday. So take advantage of this um, freedom that we have to go on to the sanctuaries on tomorrow. Hallelujah. Give God praise for all that he has done for us. But I came today to talk about a scripture found in the book of Romans, the 14th chapter and the 11th verse. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Hallelujah. I've taken for a subject matter. He is alive. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you have done. Thank you for this great salvation that you have shown unto us. You have shown your greatness. Hallelujah. Because when nobody else could redeem us, when no one else was qualified, hallelujah, you clothed God the Son in humanity and allowed Jesus to come to the earth to die for us. For that I give you praise, God. So I pray, Father, that as we read through your word and as we study your word, I pray, God, that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the life of a believer, there are two great days that bring us so much joy. You know, a little bit more joy than we normally have on every other day. And those two days are Resurrection Sunday and Christmas. Hallelujah. One marks when Jesus got up from the grave and the other marks when he was born. Hallelujah. His birth. Jesus is essential to the life of, you know, every Christian. For if Jesus had not died and had not rose again from the grave, hallelujah, we would be without hope. First Corinthians says, in First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, I want to read uh, verses 12, 13, and 14. It says, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then are preaching vain and your faith is also vain. But let's jump down to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, verse 20. It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them. That's Hallelujah. Them. Jesus has risen. Believers, you know, children of God, we have something to celebrate. Jesus' resurrection is not about a pagan Easter egg hunt or it's not about no bunny rabbit. I'm sorry. The only hunt that everybody was doing um, during the time of Jesus' resurrection was hunting for his body. But the Lord was gracious, I want you to know, and he appeared to his disciples and 500 more. You know, they was worried, where was Jesus? Where's his body? Hallelujah. The word resurrection, I want you to know, according to the Unger's Dictionary, it means the return of Christ to bodily life 
or the earth or the third day after his death. Hallelujah. In the book of the gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, there was two men on the road to Emmaus. And it says in verse 13, now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together all these things which had happened. You know, they was talking about, you know, the big news of that day. That was Jesus had been crucified. You know, they had crucified the Savior. It, how be it? And so they were talking about this in distress. And it says in verse 15, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself, hallelujah, drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know it was him. In the, in the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, I want to read two verses from there. The Bible says, let it be um, by the mouth of two witnesses. So let's see what the Bible has to say about his resurrection. Hallelujah. Over again in the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, the 29th verse, it says, And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. It says in verse 30, but God, hallelujah, raised him from the dead. And over in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, I want to read uh, beginning at verse 3. It says, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture says. He was buried. And he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. Oh, these are some great testimonies. And then if we go over to um, the fifth verse, it says, He was seen in 1 Corinthians 15, 5. He was seen by Peter and then the twelve. And then it says, after that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Verse 7, then he was seen by John and later by the apostles. Oh, hallelujah. What great testimony that Jesus is alive. He has risen and he has been seen, hallelujah, by people after his crucifixion. Glory be to God. You know, there are many even today that profess that Jesus appeared to them. And who am I to be, you know, not to believe them? If those who profess sightings of, you know, are a visitation from the Lord, you know, they themselves will give account if they are lying. But I want you to know that there are so many benefits to Jesus raising from the dead and, you know, paying the price for our redemption. The greatest of which we all, hallelujah, one day we'll be able to say we see him, hallelujah, and we shall see our Savior face to face as scripture Going says. Going back to our text, Romans 14, 11. For as it is written, as I live, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you know that Jesus is alive? Hallelujah. He is alive. He says, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Glory be to God. And every tongue shall confess to God. When Jesus walked on this earth the first time, he was dishonored. You know, many people treated him so poorly, treated him so bad. They spit on him. They beat him. They lied on him. You know, they did so many things, betrayed him. But the second time, I want you to know when Jesus comes, he's coming in great glory. He's coming in great power. And all will look upon him. Hallelujah. The one whom they crucified. But I want you to know, after, you know, the judge, everybody, when they come into contact with the Lord, all will worship and honor him and praise God. Hallelujah. Therefore, 
we, you know, believers, we praise him in advance. We praise him now. We honor Jesus and we confess that Jesus is Lord. Scripture says that every spirit that says Jesus is Lord, hallelujah, and believes that Jesus is their Lord. I can confess today that Jesus is my Lord, is from God. Hallelujah. But we praise him in advance knowing that we already have the victory. Hallelujah. The victory that Jesus has given us, you know, when he rose from the grave. And even though it might appear here that evil is prevailing right now. I want you to know <laughs> it's just a matter of time before evil doers meet their final end. Oh, hallelujah. On this resurrection eve, I want you to know that Jesus has risen. He is close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sin. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.